Hey everybody, Jeff aka G Curse here. I hope you're all having a great day. It is currently uh eight or sorry, eleven twenty AM on the fifth of April two thousand twenty four. It is a very it, it to me it, it to me it feels cold, but the temperature is forty seven. And as always, let before we even get to the show, let's talk about that. It is currently forty seven degrees. However, I actually I'm not sure if you know, I'm coming down with something, or if it's just the temperature itself, but I feel real cold. <laughs> it's to the point now I actually have, I know you can't really tell it, but I have like a hoodie on, I got a shirt underneath that, I got sweatpants and a pair of shorts underneath that. I normally I'm the kind of guy who likes to wear a normal t-shirt and shorts when I'm indoors. So to wear a hoodie... With sweatpants, you know, that, that that shows I'm feeling pretty cold. I'm not sure exactly why. I hope I'm not coming down with something because of the fact that, you know, I'm returning to work in a couple days and the last thing I need is to be getting sick all of a sudden, you know. So, 47 degrees. Let's click on more details, shall we? So, it's 47. It feels like... Uh, the real feel is supposed to be 52. It feels like 47 in the shade. Uh, today it's supposed to be 57, some sun, and then cl uh, turning cloudy with a pass passing shower too. Tonight it's supposed to be cloudy and 41 with a shower in spots this evening, otherwise considerable cloudiness. And then we are actually just a little bit over 13 hours of sunlight here where I live, so that's nice. That's nice. I think we top out like, what is it, like 15, 16 hours of sunlight before we start going back into fall and everything. Holy shit, I can't believe that. This, it just feels like the, the year is just passing by, you know, like really, really fast, you know. It literally just felt like yesterday, like it was just after Christmas and everything. It, it's, it, it, it's, it's kind of eye-opening, I guess you could say. So, uh, let's see, forecast 57, the average is 60, the last year is 52 on this day. The record high was 80 degrees. That was back on 2007. I cannot believe that. 41 is for forecast low. Average is 40. Last year was 37. 2021, it was actually 29 degrees. Holy shit. Ugh. And then daily. Let's check daily really quick. So Friday, some sun turning cloudy. Passage shower 2. Saturday... Cloudy and cooler with a little rain. Sunday, mainly cloudy and uh, with a couple of showers may, uh, mainly later. Monday, it's considerable cloudiness with a couple showers. And then it looks like possibly we may hit a few days of at least dry weather, hopefully. So mostly cloudy uh, Tuesday. Clouds followed by brightening sky uh, Wednesday. Mostly cloudy in the morning. Sun come, turn uh, sun through the cl high clouds in the afternoon on Thursday. Friday, clouds. And then it looks like Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Okay, it looks like actually until next Wednesday, it should be dry after this coming Monday. And then it looks like we have some on again, off again weather. But let's actually scroll through real quickly to the very end. Let's see, how far does this go out to? Let's see, this goes all the way out to... May 19th. Well, really? Only May 19th? I thought it would go a little bit further. Anyway. Uh, let's see. All the way out then, it is cloudy with a high... Or cloudy with a bit of rain in the afternoon, which is it's Sunday also. High 50, 69, low 44. Let's see. When is sunrise that day? When is sunrise that day? Sunrise is at 534. Oh, my God. I'm going to like that. I... I like it when I can wake up and it's nice and daylight out. I normally get out of bed about 6.30ish, 6 to 6.30, I should say. And then and then uh, I like to get home and it's still daylight out. And the sunset is actually supposed to be 8.30 or 8.43. And we'll have a total of, hold on, of 15, 15 hours, 9 minutes. So, But yeah, so that is it for the weather. So let's get past that. Hold on, let's... Oh, hell, there you go. So, I got a question to everybody. Do you like ghost stories? Wait, hold on. I hope you like ghost stories. I'm trying to get this thing to work correctly. There we go. Close that out. Uh, I have the case for you, ladies and gentlemen. I have the case of the Queen Mary. 
the Queen Mary is a ship that has seen a lot of action during her life. Uh, basically, uh, I think she was uh, she was uh, originally she originally uh, made her initial uh, voyage. I think it was like 1936 or something. That's what it says on the wiki. But yeah, she had a lot of incidents. She was actually used during World War II. And there's it's believed that a lot of people died on the ship. And that's why she is known as a haunted ship. But we're going to get right back to that right after these commercials. Stay tuned. I'll be right back. If I can pause. All right. Okay. Look. Let's scare someone. Who are you going to call? Yeah. <laughs> We're here! So are we. The Frankenstein Dracula monsters! Watch this! Get them, boys! Ghosts! Funny guy! Watch him scream! <laughs> ah, look out! Now your turn to scream! Fun to scare! The real Ghostbusters! Ah. Each sold separately! New from Kenner! Fun to zap! Ah. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. So today we are doing the case of the uh, Queen Mary. It's a haunted ship. If you like those type of cases, you are going to love this uh, this case. If you are new to this series, basically this is where I go to the Unsolved Mysteries wiki. And I have my secretary. Her name is Jasmine. She is going to read to us the case. This is a case reading. It's not a case viewing. So if you really want to see the case, what I'm going to do is in the comments or in the description, I'm going to post the links to the official case and then I'll also post a link to the Unsolved Mysteries wiki along with uh, the link to my Unsolved Mysteries commentary which is on Facebook that you can see. I'm also going to post a link to the montage of commercials that you're actually seeing in this uh, video. So with that out of the way let's actually get to the good stuff shall we? So let's turn that off, let's turn that off. So I will start with the first part. Basically, the Queen Mary. The case file is the Queen Mary. Uh, location: she is. Uh, she was. She was housed at Long Beach, California. The date was 1936. I think that's when she had her initial launch. <laughs> and then it says description is coming up. So clearly, somebody uh, never finished the Wikipedia or the wiki page. You know, maybe I should go in there and. Uh, you know, and kind of fix it up because apparently somebody else is failing their job right now. Okay, so here I will start with, I'm going to select this portion here. Let's do that. And then I will have the lovely Miss Jasmine read it to everybody. The Queen Mary. Oh my God. RK area. And oh, for some Hold reason, on. I. Hold on, sorry about that, guys. It's... Come on. Ian Mary is a transatlantic ocean liner now permanently docked in Long Beach, California, and used as a hotel. Since she was moored, several employees and guests have seen ghostly figures and heard mysterious sounds. Waitress Carol Lydon describes. I'd been here about 14 years when I first had the first experience of actually seeing what I thought to be a ghost. I was in the work area, and for some reason I picked up a cup of coffee, went out to the tables, and there was a lady sitting there. I was so fascinated by her dress. She appeared to be in a late afternoon cocktail type dress from the 40s. She had dark hair, rolled at the sides with no makeup on. She seemed to be very pale, but I never saw her move. I left the table, went up about 10 feet, turned around because I wanted to take another look, and there was nothing there. Okay, now they, the program only takes a quick second to continue. Former reading. ship tour guide, Nancy Ann, also had an encounter. One day I was standing on the stairs of the pool, and out of the corner of my right eye saw a woman, probably in her 60s or 70s, in black and white. So I went down the stairs and around the pillar, expecting to find her standing there, but she wasn't anywhere to be found. It was only a matter of seconds. She couldn't have gone anywhere. Still from Unsolved oh, okay, Mysteries. Ep there you go. So basically what we have here is we have the, I like what I loved about these earlier uh, episodes of Unsolved Mysteries is that they really spent a lot of time on the ambiance of the case. So like this, the, I talked about a lady who was the, the worker was going to with 
the, the with a cup of coffee. She could have just literally said she got a co cup of coffee, she saw somebody, and then the person was gone. But she actually went on to further describe it. She talked about how she liked the dress. And then, like, for this, uh, the person talking about the person who was uh, swimming, that they were in black and white. You know, I loved the real the first season, especially of Unsolved Mysteries, because they built... They, they were really descriptive, I guess you could say, about, you know, the, the, the interviewers were really descriptive about what they were saying. You know. Okay, so let's take a quick look here. So we have a still from Unsolved Mysteries episode reenacting Nancy Ann's encounter with a ghostly apparition of an elderly woman near the pool. And here it is. Okay. So let's select this. And then... Read aloud. It is believed these ghosts are those of people who have died aboard the ship or once lived there. Marine engineer John Smith was one of the first to work on board after the ship arrived in Long Beach in 1967. On several occasions in a two-month period, he heard something unusual in the ship's bow where there should only have been silence. He has described the sound of metal tearing, water rushing, and men screaming as if there had been a rupture of the ship's hull. He investigated, but could find nothing that would have caused the noises. Okay, so what would you do if you were working on the ship? If you were working on the ship and you saw a woman who disappeared, or you heard these noises, but you couldn't find like the sound of the location of the torn metal, what would you want to do? Would you want to keep working on the ship? Would you be like, okay, that's it. Fuck it. I'm out of here. Me, I'll be honest. I'm the type of person that would rather just stay and, you know, keep working on the ship. Because I'll be honest, I've never had an encounter with a ghost. I think it would be actually pretty cool to see a ghost. But that's just me. A lot of people are very kind of skittish, I guess you could say. If they see somebody disappear, I think that would scare a lot of people. Okay, so let's do this. Uh, no, not ye years. <laughs> years. There we go. Uh, let's go down to here. Oh, whoa, 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 we're almost done already. Huh, damn. I'm shocked at how small some of these cases are. Okay, let's continue then. Years later, John read about a tragedy from World War II. After being converted into a troop ship, the Queen Mary accidentally collided with a British cruiser named the Curacao. The Queen Mary's bow managed to slice the ship in half. Tragically, over 300 men were killed. John believed what he had heard was an echo of that disaster. Okay, I'm going to pause it really quick. Uh, basically, she, she named it the Curacao or something like that. If I remember correctly, I think it was pronounced something like the Kurosawa. Or something like that on the show. I'm not sure if, if that was the correct min way that, that they pronounced it. Or the computer, the way that it pronounced it was the correct way. I'm not sure. But I just thought I'd give a little bit of background. Like, the, this is how the computer pronounced the boat. But this is how it was also said on the show. So, take it how you want, though. Disaster. The area where he had heard the sounds was the same area that was damaged during the collision. Other witnesses have described other incidents. Late one night, maintenance supervisor Kathy Love and her co-worker heard mysterious sounds in the pool area. They described the sound of a little girl giggling, playing in the area, and splashing in the water. The splashing stopped, the giggling continued, and the wet footprints of a small child were noticed walking across the floor into the locker room. I remember actually seeing that when I was younger, when I was younger watching this with my mom. I can't recall what day it was. It could have been a Sunday. It could have been a Tuesday, whenever it originally aired. I remember seeing that, and I thought that was, I thought that was actually real. Now, when I say real, here's what I mean, okay? A lot of people who are especially younger that watched Unsolved Mysteries, a lot of us in the 80s would see these cases, and we actually thought what we were watching was actually happening at that time. It was We actually thought that, like, as they were talking, we literally saw the footprints. We thought that that was actually a haunting that was happening right in front of us. Or uh, some of the other cases where somebody would be murdered, we actually saw, you know, we would see the people be killed. 
And then we'd be like, why isn't anybody doing anything? They're right there. They're right there. Stop them, you know. And then come to find out these were reenactments. But yeah, it even uh, they even kind of uh, kind of talked about this a little bit on the Unsolved Mysteries portion of I Love the 80s. If you've never seen I Love the 80s, I also suggest that you go watch that show. That is an awesome. Excuse me, an awesome fucking show. But yeah, so I, I remember seeing them like, oh my god, it's a ghost, you know. Only to find out when I was older that these were reenactments. Okay. Let's see if it works. Room. Okay. Apparently, the ghosts are still enjoying their stay on board the ship. At least one of the spirits originates from a very violent accidental death. Deep within the ship near the engine room is an area called Shaft Alley. During a routine fire drill in 1966, a man named John Petter was crushed to death by the watertight door number 13. He is believed to haunt the area. Both tour members and employees have experienced hauntings there. I was working in the capacity of a lead guide, which meant my job was to close down the tour route and make sure that there weren't any stragglers behind, Nancy recalls. I don't know why I turned around, but I turned around and standing right behind me on the step was a man. He had on blue overalls and they were dirty. When I stepped aside to let him go by, he wasn't there. He was gone. I don't necessarily believe any other ghost stories that other people have come up with. I only know what I saw, and I only believe what I saw with my own EY. Her own eyes, that's basically what she went to say. You know, if if you've had this experience, you know, you, if you had this experience, why is it so hard for you to believe that other people could have had the same experience? Now, granted, I've never seen a ghost. Like I said, I would like to, but because of that right now, if somebody said they saw a ghost, I'd be like, okay, you know, like, I, you know, I wouldn't really believe it because I've never seen it. But the minute I see something, if I see something, then it would be wrong of me to say, hey, you know, yeah, whatever you say, sure thing, pal, you know. It's just, you would think somebody who had one of these experiences would be a little bit will be understanding and uh you know and kind of understand that other people are having these same type of experiences okay so here i will read the next part of the background the queen mary took her maiden voyage on may 27 1936 and that's why i i pointed out the 1936 a, a little bit ago during the five-day trip across the Atlantic, she was a floating party, a symbol of luxury travel in a gil uh, gilded age. During World War II, she was turned into a troop ship. Due to her ghostly gray camouflage, she, uh, she was named the Gray Ghost. After the war, she reverted back to her former uh, glory. She crossed the ocean a total of 1,001 times. In the, in the over 30 years she was at sea, she witnessed four births and at least 49 recorded deaths. She was retired to Long Beach in 1967. Okay, here. I'll, um, yeah, I'll just let, I'll let uh, Jasmine read this part. Okay. Hyans, in September 1988, Unsolved Mysteries brought a team of paranormal experts to investigate the Queen Mary. Using sophisticated recording equipment, they attempted to verify the eyewitness accounts. Two of the researchers were Dr. William Roll and Tony Cornell. Both had years of paranormal research. Cornell set up surveillance equipment in Shaft Alley, while Dr. Roll led a team of psychics on board. All six psychics claimed to know nothing about the ship's history or about the haunting occurrences. Armed with maps and their psychic sensitivity, they went off alone in many different directions. Afterwards, they gathered to compare notes. Though some had nothing to report, others sensed a great deal of activity that coincided with eyewitness reports. One of the psychics felt that a collision had occurred. In Shaft Alley, one psychic sensed a 20-year-old tragedy, the death of John Petter. The psychic sense the rhythmic banging of a wrench. While surveying the bow area, Dr. Roll heard unusual sounds that he couldn't explain. He and a security guard heard the sounds of two men talking. It seemed to be coming from the lower levels of the bow of the ship. 
he placed a voice-activated tape recorder in the bow area at the same spot where the voices were heard. For most of the night, nothing was recorded. However, in the early morning, for a full two minutes, the tape recording picked up sounds where none should be heard. This included loud banging sounds and unexplained voices. Earlier, the bow had been sealed off. The researchers tried to duplicate the sounds through mechanical means, however, they were unsuck. <laughs> unsuck. <laughs> wow. Unsuccessful. They were unsuccessful. Not unsuck. Unsuccessful. <laughs> okay, so, uh, yeah. Honestly, let's see here. Where can I, uh, let's see, surveillance. Okay, they claim to, all six psychics claim to have known nothing about the ship's history or about any hunting activities. I'll be honest, I'm not sure if it's just me. I'm the type of person that whenever I I deal with something, either something new or something that I've already dealt with before, I always like to do a little bit of research. It may not be a lot, but just a little bit of research. I don't like to go into any area blind. So it, it kind of, like, like, they're saying, oh, they knew nothing about the ship's history or the hunting occurrences, and which I really got to say, Really? You know, like, really? You, you knew nothing. None of these guys did any sort of, uh, like, any sort of investigation or, you know, at least getting some in basic information. You know, like, I, I, I find that kind of hard to believe, you know. Okay, extra notes. This case originally aired on the October 26, 1988 episode of Unsolved Mysteries along with Tallman House. Tallman House is a good fucking case. You should all go take a look at it. Uh, the Journal Wayne in, Wayne in. I love the Journal Wayne in. That was actually uh, one of the cases that actually scared the shit out of me when I was younger. Along with the Tallman House. But the Journal Wayne in. Oh my god. There was just something about that case. And the Tatum House. This is actually. It looks like this was the first. You know. The, we're starting to reach the cases of Unsolved Mysteries. That were actually not part of the special episodes. So basically as you can see here. doesn't Because it doesn't say special number 3, 4, 5. You know. Uh, so basically. we I think we are actually at that point now. Where we're actually getting into the. Uh, Robert Stack. The, the normal Robert Stack series. Basically. It was later reprofiled on the Dennis Freina hosted series on the July 27, 2009 episode. The ghosts of the Queen Marie are also featured on the episode Ghost Hunters. The Atlantic Paranormal Society documented a variety of minor occurrences culminating with the footage of a bed being disturbed. But video analysis revealed that their camera was tampered with to create the effect. And I think that's it. Okay. So that was the case of... I, before I finish that, let me just say thank you to Jasmine. She was an awesome assistant today. I just want to say thank you to her. So she's going back off into the office. And it is now time for me to you know kind of do this. But I just wanted to say... Thank you to, you know, everybody who wa who are watching these videos. It means a lot to me. Uh, I love the ghost cases. I think, honestly, out of everything, I love the ghost cases the most. I like all the cases, but I think it's those ghost cases, especially in the early years of Unsolved Mysteries when it was very atmospheric and everything. That's what I really love, you know. But I will be right back with my final thoughts. These forests have been used for over a hundred years. Hard to believe, isn't it? That's the miracle of the forest. With careful management, these forests have renewed themselves year after year. This is Lloyd Bridges. Come see the miracle of the forest for yourself and get involved with the new Forest for Us program. Okay, everybody, welcome back. It is now time for my final thoughts. And overall, like I said before, I love this case. If you want... A case that is very atmospheric, that is very raw in its recording style, then you're going to love the case of the Queen Mary. The, this case is right up there with the uh, Tallman House, the uh, Tallman House, the General Wayne Inn, and the St. James Hotel. Oh my God, you will love those four cases, especially the Tallman House and the St. James Hotel. Oh my God, you know, like. 
I, I strongly suggest that if you like ghost cases, you look up those cases on Unsolved, on the uh, YouTube, on on YouTube. Uh, the only one that I don't th don't think is there is the St. James Hotel, which I actually still have a copy of on my day on my uh, hard drive. But yeah, so that is about it. I hope you've enjoyed this case. I love ghost cases, and I cannot wait to cover more cases, more ghost cases. But until next time, as always, my name is Jeff, a.k.a. Geekers. If you liked what you watched, please click that subscribe button. Click that, the like button. You know, that way you'll be updated when I release new information. Or the bell. I also forgot the bell. The bell. But yeah, so I guess that's about it. I will see you all for the next episode of Black Sight Files from Unsolved Mysteries. Take it easy, everybody.